The Bone Chips by RJ Barger. Definitely one of the most unique fantasies I've read in a long time, but also one of the most challenging books to recommend to a wide audience. So let's discuss this book, and this review will be 100% spoiler free, so you don't have to worry if you haven't read it. And also, if you didn't know it, then I'm currently hosting a read along for this trilogy, and we have been reading this book in the month of June, and we're gonna start the second book in July, so there's still time to join the read along. So please just join the Discord if you wanna join us to read along. We've been having lots of great discussions, and it's been really interesting to hear the different perceptions and some some people have dropped out and some people have absolutely fallen in love with it because this book is quite strange and as I mentioned it is quite hard to recommend. Now if I gave this book to 100 fantasy readers then I could probably see maybe 20 or 30 people absolutely loving this book and maybe giving it 5 out of 5 stars. I would maybe see 20 people giving it like an average rating like 3.5 or something and then and then i wouldn't be surprised if maybe 40 out of these 100 people just dnf this book because they just still they didn't enjoy it but what are my thoughts on this very very unique and strange book well firstly the reason why i find this book so hard to recommend is because this book has quite a steep learning curve. When you pick up this book, you are just thrown into this world that is so different from almost anything I have ever experienced before. RJ Barker, he almost seems to want to flip everything on his head, and instead of utilizing terms we know for like ships and so on, he invents almost new terms for everything that we know in our world, which just makes this a bit more challenging. And the writing style, I mean, I don't even know how to describe the writing style, but it is so, so so unique and one major theme while doing this read along is that a lot of people said that they had read maybe 50 or 100 pages before they got adjusted to the writing style because it is so different. The amount of new terms that RJ Barger utilizes in this series is absolutely mad and he's even added a glossary at the back of this book just to help readers a bit with understanding what all of these different terms means. Unfortunately I actually wish that the glossary was a bit more extensive because it almost only covers the different ranks on these boats and doesn't really explain all the other terms but there is a glossary to help you out a bit but yeah the writing style is very very unique like you will read especially in the beginning there will be so many terms you're just like I have no idea what this means. What are they talking about now? But what I will say, even though the prose can be quite a challenge to get into, it fits this world so, so beautifully. And actually, after I read maybe 50 or 100 pages, I actually really started loving the prose because it felt very atmospheric and it felt like it fitted the world so beautifully and perfectly, which I really appreciate. So what is this book about? Well, basically, this is a nautical fantasy. So most of the story takes place on boats, but it is so different from, for example, the Life Ship Changers trilogy. In this world, it almost feels like there are no trees. I think there are no trees, even though I don't think it's explicitly mentioned. But all the boats or ships are made from bones, and specifically dragon bones. So hunting these big dragons, as you can see on the cover, is so ridiculously valuable. Because if you're able to kill one of these dragons, you can actually build a boat or a ship, and that will give you a real advantage over the enemy. Now we're set in a world where we have two parties. We have the Gauntlet Islands and we have the Hundred Isles and basically these two different kingdoms have been at war for so so long and now we're set in a situation where basically all the sea dragons that have been utilized to build these ships have gone extinct. Now the story starts where we follow this young character called Joran and he's he's basically being accused of committing a horrendous crime so he's been punished to go on a black ship. The, these black ships are basically ships where all the criminals go on and if you go on one of these ships then and it's basically understood that you're gonna spend the rest of your life on one of these ships. Now quite early in the story we hear that there has been a sighting of a sea dragon or an Arrakisian, I think that's how it's pronounced in the story, and obviously as soon as they hear about this potential sea dragon being out there, they know they have to go on a mission. Now I won't say anything more about the plot, but there's a definite quest that involves ships and a sea dragon. Now what did I love about the series? Well firstly, I am a huge sucker when a, whenever a fantasy you utilize is the metrotrope and the interesting part is that while we follow Joran this young lad primarily the main character is actually this character called Lucky Mies and we're basically told the story of Lucky Mies throughout the eyes of Joran this younger person that's just been thrown on the ship and I found a lot of the character dynamics and interactions incredibly fascinating and just learning about these ships and the history of the world and just learning about all the different creatures it just felt so so engaging and riveting in my opinion now second 
recently, and I already mentioned this a bit, but the biggest highlight of this whole book so far has been the world building. Now, I know a lot of people will probably compare this trilogy with the Life Shooter trilogy by Robin Hobb, because both of those fantasies, they take place on the ocean, they're nautical fantasy stories, but what I would say here is that, that this series felt even more unique. It just feels like RJ Barker, he really challenges a lot of the perceptions we have about how a fantasy story is supposed to go. Almost everything feels like it's flipped on its head, which I really appreciate, and I absolutely love, love, love the fantastical creatures that are introduced in this book. Again, I think you should just pick it up and experience for yourself, but there are some fantasy creatures that are, especially this one creature that is stuck on a boat, that is my favorite thing I've come across in fantasy for a long while. I think it's just so clever made. And then just the sea dragons, they are absolutely massive and I love dragons and just hearing about these dragons that live in the ocean that are so so massive and play an important role in the economy and so on. I just love it. And the third thing I loved about the series is the prose. Now I already also mentioned this but the prose can be a bit of a challenge so that might be a downside as well for some readers that is just too dense, too weird how the story is written and so on but if you're like me then you will actually come to absolutely love how the story is written. And fourth while I'm not a huge fan of battles and war and stuff like that in my fantasies, I found this to be really, really interesting. I found Barker's descriptions on how these different ships go to war very interesting and riveting, and it just felt different and refreshing once again. Now, I'm not going to give this book 5 out of 5 stars, even though I loved this book. And the main reason is because I felt the pacing was a bit inconsistent at times. The first 50 pages or so are quite dense and difficult to get into, and, and then the story becomes even more engaging, and I just really felt like the pacing was beautiful until we hit around the halfway mark and then again it felt like it slowed down a bit. Now the pacing isn't atrocious by any means but I just felt like it was tiny bit inconsistent in places. Now secondly it's not necessarily a criticism but I sometimes felt like Barger went a bit overboard with the new terminology. There was just so many different terms used again and again and again which really again added something to the atmosphere of the book but sometimes I was just like what are they talking about? And another element that made this read a bit more confusing in places is that some creatures maybe have like two or three or four different terms or names for them. So sometimes if you didn't read it carefully, you would actually miss that they were actually talking about this creature that you already knew, but they just were using another term to describe it. But what I will say here in conclusion is that this is one of the most refreshing and unique fantasies I have read in a long time. Now, before I picked up the Life Shooter trilogy by Robin Hobb, I never expected to enjoy books that take place on the sea this much. But reading the Life Shooter trilogy and now the first book in the Bone Ships has really shown me that there are some incredible fantasy stories set on boats. And I'm really intrigued to pick up book two, which I'm definitely going to do, and maybe read some other fantasies. So if you know any other nautical fantasies, definitely let me know because I have been really enjoying my time with this. And I would say that if you are looking for a fantasy that is bringing something new to the table that feels original and refreshing and has really interesting writing style and the world building is so intricate and fascinating then really you should pick up the bone ships this will stand out as one of my favorites of the years probably but it will definitely stand out for being refreshing and original so i really appreciate that and I absolutely can't wait to read book two so yeah if you want to read this book and join the read along there's still time pick up this book and we're going to read book two in july and as i mentioned the third book in august so I'm giving this book 4 out of 5 stars and I'm hoping that book 2 will be a proper 5 out of 5 star read. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and as always, a special thanks to my patrons for supporting you here. I really appreciate it. <laughs>